um, what's your, um, um, uh, what's your, um, opinion of whether, um, space exploration is, um, uh, and um, settlement is desirable from uh, your point of view? Um, I think it's very desirable. I mean, I'm a great fan. I remember I'm of the generation where um, one of my first memories is Neil Armstrong stepping onto the surface of the moon. And therefore, I've always been inspired by that uh, human curiosity, not only just to find out about space, but also to experience um, a different uh, type of living and a different type of environment. Now, I, I mean, I've thought a little bit about it because a dear old friend of mine, one of my mentors in science, was Sir Robert Boyd, one of the founders of the British Space Programme. And he was an expert in remote sensing of the atmosphere. And he argued very strongly that it was far too expensive and far too risky to send human beings into space. It was much easier, and he argued that most of the science that we wanted to do uh, could be done simply by uh, satellites and robots. But I think there's something about um, experiencing as a human being something very different. I think for me, as I watched the Apollo landings, even as a six-year-old child, my imagination was gripped. Um, my worldview was expanded. And indeed, I think there is some science that only human beings actually will be able to do. And therefore, to, to have bases either on the moon or in Mars, um, maybe even on the moons of uh, Jupiter or Saturn, I think is desirable. Now, of course, in all of this, there's always the financial question. Uh, uh, who pays and is it worth it? And I think that's always a balance for big science against some of the humanitarian needs that we have in the world. But for me, uh, big science is worth investing in because it um, not only is good science, but it, 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 it gives us the next generation of scientists. Awesome, man. So uh, what, what do you think uh, people um, can and should do to um, prepare themselves for a universe in which um, uh, interested groups are um, attempting to colonize uh, um, other planets like Mars? Sure. Well, that's a very good question. And I think there's a number of things. The first is that we need um, uh, a whole generation of people committed to the science of how this is going to be worked. And I think we're just seeing some of the early stages of this in terms of thinking of, for instance, how you land a rocket on the surface of Mars, uh, how you uh, establish a colony. And of course, it's not just physics here, it's psychology, it's how a group would work together, um, how you understand isolation uh, or delaying communication. So I think there's a lot of science still to do. Right. I think there's some fundraising to do. I don't think this will ever be fully covered by public money. I think some of it will have to come from the private sector. And so I think uh, how we talk about the benefits of this uh, for humanity or for uh, what minerals we might be able to mine or what new science we might be able to do is important for us to do. And then I think that there's some work to be done in terms of ethics and justice. There's questions about what right we have to take over people's planets, particularly if we're terraforming, that is, we're transforming the environment. Um, when I say people's planets, I mean it might be that there are microbes on the surface of Mars or deep down in the permafrost. What's the ethical question, the justice question? about uh, taking over a planet and also the question of as we expand into different worlds onto different planets the question for me will be um, who goes will it just the rich who decide they want to escape the environmental degradation of the earth leaving the poor behind 
So there are questions about science, there are questions about um, enterprise and entrepreneurship, and there are questions about justice for me in all of this. Awesome. So, uh, so um, what do you think um, yeah, people should do if, uh, if they want to participate, but um, worry that they might not be um, taken seriously by um, other future colonists who um, believe differently or might not accept them for some reason? Um, well, I think, I think science is one of those wonderful things that actually lots of people can get involved in. And of course, uh, you do have to have a degree of mathematics to think about these things uh, at the highest level. But one of the things about education is the wonderful way that um, we can use the resources of the web or the resources of scientists that we know to take an interest in these things to understand a little more about what's involved. I think, uh, I think one of the things that increasingly is the case is that people are now taking this far more seriously than they did 10 years ago. Um, I always wanted to be an astronaut, but at, uh, at six foot three and a half uh, in height and in quite a large weight, I think those days have gone for me. But I still can try and inspire a new generation to say that space travel actually is going to involve lots of people. It's going to not just involve the physicists and the mathematicians. It's going to involve engineers and biologists, life scientists. It's going to involve leaders. It's going to involve counselors. It's going to involve a whole uh, range of gifts and graces. And I think we can help our young people particularly to think about this. Awesome. Um, uh, how, uh, how would you... Um, answer some claims that um, uh, um, certain groups of people should uh, uh, be um, barred from space colonization or um, have only a limited uh, beliefs because they as some people believe that their beliefs might be harmful uh, well I, i've not thought very much about that i have to say um i mean it's interesting i i speak as a christian and uh, as a Christian theologian, I don't find in any way the possibility of space travel or indeed of discovery of life elsewhere in the universe as harmful to my beliefs as a Christian. For me, they'd simply be uh, expanding my understanding of the nature of God and the greatness of his creation. Um, I think uh, one would always have to ask practical important questions about some of the types of people that you might want to send into very uh, difficult environments. So for example, um, it would be important as part of the selection process in the early days of astronauts to have people who were psychologically robust, for example, to face the, uh, the psychological challenges of isolation from the earth and community. You'd have to have people who uh, worked well within a community. You're going to be in a very small space with lots of other people for quite a, a long time. That's going to be important as well. But I don't think we should bar people on the grounds of uh, our own prejudice. I think uh, often people will say, oh, you religious people, you won't be able to cope with this type of thing. I don't think that's the case. Uh, in fact, what's interesting is that in the history of speculation about other worlds, it's often been Christian theologians in the past who were at the forefront of thinking about these things. So often we have our own prejudices and we shouldn't impose those upon who goes. I think diversity is key to what it means to be human and therefore i think in future colonies diversity is going to be key to their health and fruitfulness okay um uh, that that's all the questions i've got um anything you'd like to add 
No, I think that's fine. They're very good questions, Heidi. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you. Great. You have a good day now. You too. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.